So I called Tractor Supply about an hour ago and they have chicks in store. So we are on our way to pick up some chicks. We're really excited. It's like four birds per breed or if we can get like two of each yeah like could we get two rhode island reds and two plymouths or whatever or is it have to be like four rhode island reds because if that's the case that might not be like our first choice yeah are we gonna park facing the road There's so many chicks. They're really real chicks. They've gone up quite a bit. Hmm? Four black sex links. That's what I'm thinking. Mom said it was okay. Unless they really, really wanted the cinnamon. We'd have four of those, we'd have four of whatever those ones. The cinnamon ones were a Yeah. Those cinnamons were crammed in there with all those chicks. They need another, they have too many chicks. What do you say? That's what I'm leaning towards too. Like we said, it's all an experiment. We don't know at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. They may totally end up being all three. So we just got out of Tractor Supply and we got our chicks. We got um, four Buff Warpingtons, uh, two Cinnamon Queens, two Rhode Island Reds, and two um, green uh, olive egg layers. So we're really excited and they are so cute. you guys so this morning got up got an iced coffee made some chocolate syrup first and I wanted to talk to you about the chicks 
so um, we actually got the chicks a couple of days ago and I just haven't had a chance to like sit down and like film because we've been busy doing other projects. We're actually getting ready to paint the chicken coop the actual final color and I think we went with a light kind of like a light medium gray color. Got four gallons of it because we have another shed that we're going to paint the same color. So well, the outer buildings will match. Um, we have the coop is actually primed right now. It's all white and we need to um, weed rack around the bottom so we can paint because the grass grew up around the bottom area. We need to weed whack that around the run so we can get it primed. Uh, so we'll do that first and then we'll work on painting it. We got our shit which I'm so excited about, which you saw previously, you saw earlier. I mentioned in that video that we got four by four pink tins, two starlight green egg layers, two Rhode Island reds, and two cinnamon queens. However, chicken math kicks in a lot sooner than you think it's going to because we went back the same day and got four black sex links. The reason we went back is because number one, it's addictive. But number two, my brother really wanted the black sex links, but we didn't get them because we just weren't sure because we hadn't really looked up that breed or anything. And so we were just like, let's go with 10. We said, we're going to go with 10. Let's go with these and let's go home. And so we came home, kissed all over the chicks and held them and, you know, looked at them and all that stuff and then put them in their brooder. My brother's like, yeah, I really wish we got those. And then we looked them up because we're like, shoot, let's look those up real quick. And they're really good egg layers and they have a super sweet temperament as well, kind of like the Buff Warpingtons. And so we decided to go back and get them, which we did. I'm really glad we did because those have an extremely sweet temperament. And actually on our drive home with them, uh, I held one in my hand and it like fell asleep in the patch of sun just in my hand. And it was just so cute. When we got home, we were putting them in a garage, in the garage. We had the brooder built out there. However, it was too cold out there. So the nighttime temperatures have been like under, they've been like, they've been in the mid 50s at their highest and lower, um, probably like in the 50s, 40s area. And we, we kind of thought, or I kind of thought, I kind of thought like the heating table with like the heat lamp, like that would be enough but the air temperature was sitting around um they're supposed to sit around 95 degrees and the air temperature was 78 which was comfortable for us like it was plenty warm but not for the chicks and then when you actually got underneath their brooder table uh, their like heat table it was only sitting at uh, i think 84 or 83 so it's not super so it wasn't warm enough for them so they were very very active trying to stay warm and so we built a brooder box and we put it in the bathroom in the house and we plugged in a heater and we got them in there and they went to sleep almost immediately because they were so you know cold and so they got all toasty and so that's where they've been the last couple of days and uh the plan is to move them like they're not going to stay in the bathroom we can't keep them in the bathroom so uh probably once this week is up they are going to get moved out into the garage uh, because our nighttime temperatures will start to rise. Now, we are forecasted Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday for rain. So, um, we, not might, we might not be able to get them out there until Wednesday. Uh, yeah, until Wednesday. So, I don't know what the weather is going to look like because, like, if we have... <laughs> if we have really bad thunderstorms and electricity goes out, then we need to be able to be, like you know, hold our chickens, because that's not uncommon for out here. Uh, we used to have the electricity go out all the time, and I don't remember what they fixed, but somebody, I think it was out down the road, they put in, I think, a transformer or something, and it finally, we finally quit having that issue, but if the wind is really bad, the lights will flicker, so <laughs> there's that. These little uh, zinnias are coming up in this bed over here with this salvia. So I planted those and those are coming up and those are, I think those seeds are like, maybe like two years old, three years old, maybe just two, but they're coming up. So there's all these little zinnia seedlings in here. So here's the coop thus far with the rain. The dew was really heavy this morning. It's like very, very wet, you can see it on the Dutch doors. I love, love, love these doors. They were difficult to build. And so if you're watching this, Josh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> those were so, those are so cool. I love, love those doors. 
but we got it primed. This is the part we still have to paint with primer and the grass is kind of tall around like the front especially. And so we knew we'd whack that down really short so we can get our brushes in there. We did buy a new pack of brushes, um, but it's all primed and ready to go. We are going to use like a white latex to like, you know, do the trim, but this part will actually be gray. The door will actually be gray. It's coming along. It's looking. It's looking good. I can't wait to get it fully painted. It'll look so pretty. So definitely looking forward to that. Oh, I want to mention the something I forgot and I don't know. I don't know if I ever mentioned this. We are putting a roosting bar in here and it's going to go on this wall right here. So we'll have a roosting bar on this wall. And essentially what it will do is it'll connect to the wall and it will come down at an angle and it will take up floor space. So something that we wanted to do design wise was we wanted to make it so it could essentially just fold up. So basically there'd be hinges halfway and you could fold it in on itself and then we would do something on here that would allow it to fold up. And then we got to talking, and this was my mom's suggestion, was that we made it removable, entirely removable, because if you struggle with mites or anything like that, which will be a possibility due to the fact that we were doing a fixed run, and so they won't get out as much as they could if we were doing full-on free-ranging, um, sunning their roosting bars that they sleep on will help kill mites. So making sure it gets in the sun, it'll help kill, you know, all that, you know, any little creatures we don't want living in there. So thought that was a really good idea. So we will be doing that. Um, that will probably, that's not on the high priority list of getting done anytime soon. Like we're probably going to get all the wire and all that stuff done first, but, um, we are going to. We are going to give our chick chickens a place to sleep, don't worry. But I just kind of wanted to mention that because we're still brainstorming how we want to um, how we want to do that for, for sure and certain. I had somebody on Instagram ask me about whether or not we were going to be free-ranging our chickens. So essentially, we're going to have a fixed coop. We're going to have a fixed run. And so that will give the chickens a safe space outside so they can get, you know, vitamin D, scratch around, find some bugs, and a safe space inside to lay eggs and sleep. In the ideal circumstances we would have free range chickens. Like that is the ideal circumstances to have, you know, all these free range chickens. But um, because of where, because of the fact of where we live, our property is not fenced off. We have a lot of just random rogue dogs. Um, we have a lot of foxes out here and we have a lot of hawks out here. We also have coyotes out here. I've never seen them out here, but you can hear them. So you'll be like, especially like during the summer and stuff, you'll just be outside and you know, it'll be getting late and you'll hear them off in the distance pretty distinctly. So we do have them out here. And it's one of those things where once you get chickens, you do start to draw predators and stuff. That That's kind of why we're having them in a fixed coop. And like I said, the ideal circumstances, we would like to free range, but it's not really an, an option at this time. We probably will try and do stuff where, you know, like in the garden, our garden is fully fenced off. And so we had an armadillo a couple of years ago, like a year ago maybe, and um, it was just digging up the garden. I couldn't plant anything because it was digging up the entire garden. And so we had to, we fenced it off. You know, if we're out here working or something, we might put the chickens in the garden, especially if we have an area that needs to be scratched up or something, we could let them in there and just keep our eye on them. Uh, we've also talked about building like some sort of like uh, chick shaw is the only thing that's coming to my mind, like a mobile coop, like one of those, uh, like a movable mobile coop at the chick shaw uh, that you can move around and keeping the um, keeping the chicks in that, uh, not the chicks, sorry, the chickens, and that way it give them a, the ability to have fresh grass on a regular basis. And they do have like electric netting and stuff, so that could be something we look into in the future. But for the meantime, they'll be hanging out in the um, fixed coop, and we'll take them out when we can. So that's just one of those things we have to kind of figure it out as we go. My brother just came out here, and he was talking to me, and he said that it looks like after the rain that the temperature's going to drop into the 40s. So the chicks will be in the bathroom for another week, it looks like. Which I'm not complaining. That's the favorite bathroom now, after all. <laughs> Very soon, this will be planted with just all of the wonderful things there are to plant. These collards just look wonderful.
can't believe I can't believe I can't barely wrap my head around the fact that I didn't plant these and how well they're doing and they yeah they taste really good look at this garlic look how big it's getting the other thing is to kind of check for strawberries out here in these beds I don't see any oh I say I take it back I do see some look at that oh look there's some strawberries there's one strawberry two strawberries three strawberries oh looks like we might have strawberries oh look how exciting that is oh I love that I've been trying to decide if I should thin these carrots out I think I think I should and you come out here and do that can they're looking really good Thank you so much for tuning in with me today and coming along with us as we got our chicks. We are very, very excited. Um, if you like this video, please let me know by giving the big thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. Uh, if you feel like sticking around, you can click that big red subscribe button. And if you never want to miss a brand new upload to get notifications, all you got to do is click that big bell icon. Uh, now, with that said, I would love to hear from you. Love to hear your thoughts, your experiences, your chicken stories. So drop a comment. Love to hear from you. Also, if you want to see some lovely chick pictures, then you can follow me on Instagram. I will leave Instagram as well as my other socials linked down below so you can check that out because there are some chick pictures coming to you, coming near you. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.